Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Rineker, Justin Charles, John Nye, and Josh All. Yo, Dog Pack Nation, browse backers worldwide. It is Throwback Thursday, so welcome to the Dogs Podcast. I am the one and only Kenny Mack, and I've got a lot of feedback from you from the last show we did, so we got a little bit different setup. Um, last week, as you know, the dogs let me kind of turn a weekly post that I do for my Browns backers and turn it into an episode for you guys. So I hope you like the Eric Turner episode. Uh, I know uh, Sergeant Jackie Boy, two, 2150, he loved it. Can't wait for some more. So thanks for the uh, shout out, man. Uh, also, uh, Eric Turner, 3375, rip to my boy, uh, Eric Turner, E-Rock, So we got a lot of, we got some feedback. So in the comments, guys, just drop some comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, Some players, somebody mentioned a player, Reggie McNeil. You got to fill me in more, man. I looked that name up, so I wasn't 100% sure what was going on there. But uh, Raylan Wood, 2882, let me know, man. Um, As far as uh, why I do this, it's kind of the inspiration for this time of year. So we're out of mini camp. uh, We're getting into training camp. It's kind of a void or nothing right now. Tons of silly articles, maybe, like who the Browns could possibly trade for. Maybe realistic, maybe not. Um, Also, I I mean, sometimes this time of year, you know who played for the Browns. You guys are Browns fans. And you're like, man, imagine if we had Eric Turner on this team right now. How good would that be? And that's kind of the reason why I'm doing it, right? Like, whatever player back in the day would give us a little bit of extra juice. Um, before I get started though, uh, let's, uh, give some shout outs to the dogs or shout out about the dogs. So find them on, uh, social Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, be sure to like the video and drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Hell, if you guys have watched this long enough, you know, or maybe you recognize my voice. I do a lot of the callings. I just love being interactive. We want you to be interactive. So wouldn't mind hearing a couple intros from some of you guys that are watching uh throw some comments in there or what you'd like to hear what you'd like to see there's no right or wrong answers Blake may put you in your place but that's all part of the show right and i'll get you into a little secret actually what i do is i do a couple takes there's a reset button so if you go to the dogs podcast you guys should all know how to spell dogs by now it's d-a-w-g the dogs podcast.com go to send voicemail and if you hit start it starts recording if you don't like it, hit reset and do it again. That's what I do. So last week was really just a demo and a little bit about myself. I was born on the other side of the lake. I've been a fan since 85. And if you're paying close attention or you pay for the after hours, I actually explain how I became a Browns fan. It's kind of funny. We had a bad storm, mid 80s. Our rotor got stuck because you could either get Detroit, you could get Cleveland. You could get maybe some Buffalo. Uh, but mainly those two cities. I We got stuck on Cleveland, and I'm a Browns fan. Now, a little bit more about that. My cousin did play for the Browns, but if you guys know about the scab season or the strike season, he was a scab, but he got on the practice squad, be- squad because he had some CFL experience as well. More to it, we could pick up radio stations. I mean, you guys that are in the Cleveland area, you guys will remember WMS, Power 108. And when the Browns won, it was a celebration. Like, there was songs, there was t-shirts. Like, it was awesome, and I was hooked. So, fast forward 30 years, I'm in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. So, it's the capital of Canada. Uh, Right now, we're burning down. There's smoke everywhere. But I'm still going to find some time and give you guys some knowledge about the Browns or some history. Uh, January 2019, so after Baker's rookie year, I decided, you know what, I want to hang out with some more Browns fans. There's a million people in the greater Ottawa area. There's got to be at least 10 other people that want to hang out with me. Well, we started out one on our Facebook group, this guy. And we have to honor 25 now. So we get about 10, 30 people out for a game because you got to remember all our kids are playing hockey on Sundays here, right? And uh, we have a good time. So if you fast forward just a couple more years, last thing about me, I'm on the President's Leadership Council. So I'm the president of the Browns Backers here. Every chapter across the world has a president and there's 10 presidents that get together once a month and we're kind of the voice for those presidents to the Cleveland Browns. But let's get back to the main point of this. 
throwback Thursday. So it's great. It's throwback Thursday. So you know Friday's coming. It's going to be the weekend. But the player that we're going to profile kind of had a different way in the NFL. And I'm sure in the music industry, you guys have heard of One Hit Wonder. In Britannia Dictionary, it defines it as a One Hit Wonder, a performer group, etc., that is popular or successful once in a brief time. So the etc. will be a football player for this episode. And we'll talk about the brief time. So sometimes in sports, you can have a one game or a, maybe a full season one wonder uh, performance that was awesome. And then either tape catches up with you uh, or something else unforeseen happens. But back in 99, as a Browns fan, everybody remembers that time. It was great to be a Browns fan. We got our team back after the pause. I mean, I can even tell you the first player drafted in our expansion draft. It was Jim Miller. or Sorry, not Jim Miller. It was Jim Pine. But I want to talk about Jim Miller. Some of you might have been, you know, at a Browns game or like at a Browns backers party or just out and about, probably in the state of Ohio. And you see a number 95 jersey with Jay Miller on it. Because at the time there was another player named Miller on the team as well. Actually, when I go down, I think I see the same guy wearing the same way jersey every time. So if you're listening, man, drop your picture in the Facebook comments. Actually, you know what? If any of you guys have any Jameer Miller stuff, throw it in the Facebook comments. Or throw it up, tag us at the Dogs Podcast on Instagram with your Jameer Miller stuff. I'd love to see it. I think you can see the background. I got a lot of Browns merch. I love it. Um, but if you can do that, I I would personally love that. All right, before we move on, though, real quick, this is for all you Browns fans here in Ohio. I'm excited to share some great news with you. If you have not signed up yet for DraftKings, you can take advantage right now of a limited time promo for new users. All you have to do, deposit and place a $5 wager on any sport, and you will instantly get $150 added to your account and bonus bets. Whether you win or lose, you still get the bonus. All you have to do, use our code THEDOGS at sign up, all one word. And here's the thing. Using our code THEDOGS not only gets you the bonus, but it also supports this podcast. So if you haven't signed up for DraftKings yet, please do us a favor. Sign up with the code THEDOGS and place that first bet. Deals like this are what keep our podcast going year round. This offer is only available for new customers who are 21 years and older and physically present in Ohio. Please remember to always gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Check the episode description for the full terms of the offer. For more details, visit DraftKings.com to take advantage of this incredible opportunity today. So Jameer Miller, Mr. Jameer Malik Miller, entered the NFL draft from UCLA. And he was, in the time he was coming out, 94, you still wanted linebackers. Everybody was still trying to replicate Lawrence Taylor. And it's funny, at that time, and it's... Funny how 30 years makes it, you know, what a difference 30 years makes. There was actually four linebackers drafted in the top 11 picks, and he was one of them. It's funny, two of the other guys ended up on the Browns at some point. It was Willie McGinnis and John Theory, uh, but maybe we'll get in that in another episode. So he was drafted number 10 overall, being a top 10 prospect that he was, by the Arizona Cardinals. From his days at UCLA, terrorizing quarterbacks, he had five unspectacular years in Arizona. The Cardinals left Miller after the fifth year as an unrestricted free free agent. So in 1999, he signed a one-year, $1.3 million contract with the Cleveland Browns. So 6'5", 252, that's pretty intimidating, just big linebacker. It was at a crossroads. The linebacker was stuck on a one-year contract and he was on a relaunched expansion franchise. What was he going to do? Well, in his first year, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. He started 15 games. He was second on the team with 147 tackles. So that's the most he's ever had in his career. And he had about five sacks, so four and a half. So they're okay numbers for an expansion team. But, I mean... What are you going to do? You only won two games that year. Bob Sloak, the defensive coordinator, is running a 4-3. Uh, he got the axe, fortunately, for the 2-13 season. 2-14 season, I meant to say. But, I mean, he came up big in a win over the Steelers. If you're going to have two, only two wins, the Steelers better be one of them, and the Ravens better be the other. 
but they won. He had 10 tackles in a sack. If I remember correctly, it was a sack that iced the game, but that could have been the next year. But the Browns really liked his, his leadership. They like how he played the game. I mean, he still was better than he was at Arizona, so they signed him to a four-year extension worth $18.3 million. So now it's year two. He's with the Cleveland Browns, and Romeo Cornell is in his first rodeo in the land. He would eventually become our head coach down the road. He started 16 games at strong side linebacker. He had a couple uh, at, at weak side as well. So his tackles dipped a bit at 108, but he had about the same sacks, five. And I don't know if you remember that year, the Browns were riddled with injury. Tim Couch, he, I think, injured his elbow. And he was done, like, after the second game. I think they started 2-1, and one, and they ended up 3-13. and 13. And Romeo, the only thing he could do with what little guys that he had left at the end of the year, they had a UFO defense. So they weren't even putting their hand, the, like the linemen weren't even putting their hand on the ground. They were just rushing, just trying to get anything done. It was a tough, tough year. And Al Lerner in, in year three, so Jamal, uh, Jameer Miller, uh, he was in year eight. The Browns were in year three, and Al Lerner had enough. Five combined wins in two years. And, you know, unfortunately, it got worse for us down the road. But, again, that could be another episode. The Browns needed some fire. They needed some boxing. They needed something different. And they needed to wake this sleeping giant up. Tons of Browns fans across the world. There was a coach in college setting the football world on fire with brash playmakers and tough defense. Maybe a little college atmosphere is what the Browns needed. So on January 30th, 2001, the, Bra the Browns hired Butch Davis, which was a turning point for Miller's career. So a little bit about Butch. He coached the D-line for the Miami Hurricanes in college. He also coached the D-line for the Dallas Cowboys in the pros. He went from D-line coach to defensive coordinator. And I think he won the last Super Bowl as a defensive coordinator. But to get his feet wet as a head coach, he couldn't concentrate too, too much. So he hired defensive mastermind Fog Fazio. Butch really wanted him to design a defense for Miller's talents. Sound familiar? Sound like something that's going on right now, maybe with our new defensive line coach? You know, when you get your asses handed to you for two years? But I digress. Like I said before, it was year eight, number three with the Browns, and it was the best year yet. Miller was a top tens prospect that was ripping through senior quarterbacks in college, and he found himself again. He found that guy. So, in 2001, the Browns went 7-9, and nine, which was more wins than they had in the last two years. And with his new attitude and the new defense set around his abilities, he became the AFC sack leader. And of his 36 career sacks, 13 of them were in that year. The game I remember most about him that year it had to do with an interception. They were playing the Lions, and he intercepted a pass, whoever the tight end was. It wasn't too much, it wasn't anything, but he stuck with the play. He could have just tackled him, but he made a play on the, on the ball. This kind of guy he was. He always was in position to get things done once something got tailored for him. And after that, there was a, a bomb to Quincy Morgan from Tim Couch, and the Browns won that game like 28-7. to seven. And at, I'll, I'll say this, the Browns, I think, had seven interceptions in that game. It was an unreal game. One of, the, one of those things that you never see too often. And tackles for losses, his career, he had 40. That year, he had 22. So since the pause, not only was he our first pro bowler, he was our first all pro. And he actually garnered four defensive player of the year votes. So unfortunately, this article is about one year wonders. And this is where it ends. Miller had high expectations, along with the league, for what he was going to do in this defense. But in a preseason game, which was meaningless, the turf monster got him. He tore his Achilles tendon. He was carted off the field in a 27-15 preseason victory over the Vikings. 
the Browns made the playoffs, but they missed his uh, leadership and toughness the following years. It was a hell of a season, and I I couldn't wait to, that year to watch number 95 and what he was going to do. He was tough. He liked to hit, and those sacks kept coming. 13 in 16 games is a great number. And overall, you know, with the, with the Browns, I hope they can remember some of these guys, give them some halftime honors. I mean, this year we had a lot of Browns come back and to take the uh, Hall of Fame stand and smash the guitar. Well, here's a call out. I'd love to see Jamil, Jameer Miller down. Love to see Derek Anderson, Peyton Hellis. Those are other guys that come to mind. But in his last year, he was the spiritual leader and he was the um, guy that was playing multiple positions to get him, get them where they needed to be. With him right now, what he does, I mean, the only thing I could find on his LinkedIn, it says professional, anth- uh, professional athlete, philanthropist, and investor. But like I said, in, as a one-year wonder, he had a limited time with a limited amount of success. He still did his craft, carried his craft through his previous eight years. But that year was a one to remember. So with that, I'll take a quick break and we'll hear from our sponsors. What's up, Browns fans? We're excited to announce that we have partnered with Nick Chubb's team at PLB Sports and Entertainment to bring you Chubb Crunch. Now you can stiff arm breakfast with the sweet and cinnamon toast squares that pack a punch of flavor in every bite. And while the cereal itself is delicious, let's be real, it's the box that Browns fans want the most. No Cleveland Browns man cave is complete without this collector's item. Display your box of Chubb Crunch proudly with all your other Nick Chubb and Cleveland Browns memorabilia. But the best part about Chub Crunch is that a portion of every sale supports First Candle, the nonprofit committed to ending sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS. First Candle also provides bereavement support to families who have experienced loss to SIDS. Nick Chubb's sister lost her own child to SIDS in 2018, and now she's actually part of the organization working to prevent this tragedy from impacting others. So Browns fans, let's work together here to support Nick Chubb, his sister, and all those families impacted by SIDS. Plus, you get to display the awesome limited time edition Chub Crunch collector's box in your man cave. So hurry now while supplies last because once Chub Crunch is gone, it's gone. Plus, use our promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you order and get 10% off. That's right. Nick's sister gets support, you get a discount, and your man cave gets an awesome collector's item. Head to plbse.com right now and use code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, to get 10% off your order of Chub Crunch. That's plbse.com, promo code DOGS. Okay, Dog Pack, we are back, and let's turn the page to Cleveland Browns fans. And yes, that's right, there is something different about me. I got my Ottawa Dog Pound, my Ottawa Browns backers gear on right now. I change it up because I want to talk about Browns backers. So I run the Browns backers up here in Ottawa, and our group's backed by officially backed by the Browns. So what does that mean? Well, I mean, anybody can be a fan of the Browns, but if you're officially backed, the Browns support you. And here's their mission statement. So the Browns backers worldwide is a collection of fans of fan chapters throughout the world that are recognized by the Cleveland Browns to promote fun, unity, fellowship, and support the Cleveland Browns mission. So that's basically what I'm saying. The only other thing that's different is you want to positively support the team. Just like you're working for any kind of job. You're not going to go out and... Boy, if you're going to go out and trash them, you might not find yourself in that job for very long. Um, there are two types of memberships. One can be individual, and then the other one can be a chapter. So you can do both. I did both. I started my own chapter, and I am an individual member. So it's basically just there for you to socialize and participate in activities, which generally is a viewing location or a viewing party at a viewing location. So I didn't know, I don't know if you know this, there's over 70,000 members, 3,000 plus chapters in 10 different countries. So obviously I'm in Canada, I'm one of them. There's also uh, one in Spain and there's one in, um, there's one in England, or maybe two, one in, in Ireland off the top of my head. Um, I know when I go travel, I'm a big Vegas guy. So if, if you guys ever heard, heard me, I talk about Vegas all the time. I can go to the Sport Life Bar in Las Vegas watch a Browns game, they do Buckeyes games as well, and have a great time. So 
what they do or what the Browns do to recognize or help these clubs out is number one, they provide you with a yearly starter kit. So I get some swag from the Browns. I put it in little um, loot bags and I give it out. I try to find new members that way. Then they also give you one autographed item. I usually take that autographed item and I uh, donate, sorry, not donate it. I raffle it off for Movember and that's where I raise money for. Then they have alumni mascots and some other people that can come on by your club, especially if you win chapter of the year, for example. Uh, they had Webster Slaughter come down to Toronto. I got a chance to meet him. It was super awesome. They also have all the different publications uh, that you can get. So you can get email, obviously get their social, their Insta. That's not really with, with the um, uh, Browns backers. It's more along the lines of those uh, emails that you get from them that let you sign up for some auctions. They let you sign up for some raffles. They let you sign up for some memorabilia that you can possibly win. So it's super fun. Then last but not least, I think this is what people really want. They want some kind of a discount. So you get a 10% discount at off of Fanatics or the Browns Pro Shop at the stadium. So if you've been thinking about starting the club or signing up, just do it. Do it right as soon as you can. Don't forget, I'm a one-touch guy, so do it right away. But on a side note, I got a little math for you. This helps out the dog's podcast. So if you spend $120 either at the Pro Shop or on Fanatics, 10% of that's $12. Well, you can be a 99 cent YouTube member with the Dogs Podcast. I'm one of them. You get some cool little stickers, uh, uh, electronic stickers, that is, and your comments can get priority. There's also tiered levels. So if you pay for more, there's more to um, getting something out of the membership. And you can look that on the Dogs Podcast. And yes, yes, this was a shameless, shameless plug for them, but they deserve it. Now, the Browns, right now, they improve the member portal. And what I want to get to, if you are thinking about signing up or starting a club, you can go to brownsbackersworldwide.com. And then you can find or sign up and find a club. Heck, you can even sign up and find my club. You can get on with my Browns backers. If you're coming to Ottawa maybe one time a year, come and join us, join us for a game. And I use it. They have a tracker in there, how I found out the Las Vegas uh, club, but there's one in Henderson too. You can basically just type in the area and you will be able to find a Browns club in your area so you can plan your trips around them. So what should you expect at these places? Well, you're going to get uh, Browns fans, energy, swag. You're going to get stuff like I'm wearing, which is swag from the Browns you can get, or you can get the actual chapter swag. You can also get uh, raffles, the actual game. Sometimes some pubs offer game day specials and then some guys even do off-season events like we try to hit up the local baseball team and then we hit up the ottawa senators and that kind of stuff so meeting browns fans that's a part or a sense of community that it also offers the president of the club that i want to highlight now he really mentioned that uh, he what he used to do is he used to put name tags on all the members or the visitors coming to see him and it would be say something along like ken was born in chatham ontario uh, let's say I was born in Strongsville for the sake of this um, example. And Bob sits down next to me and it says, Bob from Independence. And then you strike up a conversation. Oh, I played in this baseball league. And then did you know Jim from North Royalton? And then you, that's where the sense of community comes from. And while the Browns games are fun, that sense of community can even transcend what the Browns are, right? So it's way easier to find people at a Browns event to mix and mingle and have a good time so now to the club the dog pack viewers the one that i want to talk about they were the actually the browns backers 2003 club of the year and that would be the tidewater browns backers they are the 42nd chapter that came along and they were actually established in 1989 they're located at Sneaky Pete's in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And that's, you know, a party town. So like Vegas, if you want to go there, you want to plan your trip around a Browns game, they'll have your back. Buckeye Joe Racco, or Joe Racco, we affectionately call him Buckeye Joe, uh, is the president. And he's got a ton of energy. Like talking to this guy on the phone, you can't wait to go down and party with these guys in Virginia Beach during a Browns game. He generally heads up all the operations, but he definitely wanted me to say 
that he couldn't do it out without these guys. So, Vice President Bob Bensick, Treasurer Mike Sutter Luti. Now, I hope I got your name right. Secretary Lauren Bensick, and then their jack of all trades, Dave Houston. So, guys, you're doing an awesome job, and they'll welcome you with open arms. So, if you're planning a trip on Virginia Beach and you're kind of hesitant because you don't want to miss your Browns game, go see these guys. You can find them on all the social media platforms. And if you want to do it right now, just in any platform, type up Tidewater Browns and you'll find them. Browns backers. So what do you want to, what do you expect from them? Well, it's kind of what I told you before, but these guys have a DJ as well. So it's super fun. You can see it in all their social pictures. There's Browns fans from all over the world because it is a military town as well. And people are coming there as a tourist place. There's raffles, 50-50 door prizes. Obviously, the game's there, and obviously feeling like it's a Browns bar from Ohio. That's a big thing that they have. They also have members from other groups join them when traveling through because Virginia Beach is a transient tourist town, like I said. It's got a large military presence. They're actually in Redskins territory. And Sneaky Pete's, believe it or not, that was a Steelers bar. And they still have some of the old Steelers fans still coming by in what Buckeye Joe coined as a, or they maintain a non-combative relationship, which is kind of funny. Uh, The club also partners with Jets fans. They do a bunch of charity work with them. They have a great time with these Jets fans. Bit of a smaller club, but always a good time. They're actually all coming down to the Hall of Fame game because we're playing the Jets. Maybe they'll come down in December too. Who knows? Uh, Some off-season events, though, they do is, uh, like I was mentioning what we do, they attend local minor league baseball and hockey games. Uh, I would say from hearing and listening to what Buckeye Joe said, the success that they have is having a great bar. And also they give back to the community. But from their pictures, the members, the bar staff, the owners, they all look forward to game day. And you can't hide that in the pictures that they show on their their social. So they're having the time of their life. Buckeye Joe, he does it for the charity. They do a polar bear plunge, which I saw the pictures. I mean, it's in Virginia Beach. It's not here in Ottawa, so it still looked cold. Uh, they raise funds for June's, uh, St. Jude's, Toys for Tots, and the food bank. And in Buckeye Joe's words, if you're not giving back, then you're kind of just taking space. And that's the way he approaches it, and that's the way that they give back. So, congratulations, Tidewater Browns backers. You truly bleed the brown and orange, and way to represent. As far as um, today, I hope you guys learned something. And what I want to see from you guys, do not forget to drop a comment in YouTube. I want to see those number 32, so become a member. Give the, that 99 cents you can for this month. Also, Facebook, show me your Jameer Miller gear. Show me your Eric Turner gear. I really want to see it. Check out our partnership, too. The Dogs Podcast is a partnership with the Nick Chubb Serial people. Check them out on their socials. You can know exactly what to do. And then I want to give a shout out to my son, he graduated high school today. I got a chance to see him cross, grab his diploma. Way to go, buddy. I'm so proud of you. The J-Mac got across the stage, and he's on to the next facet of his life. Uh, check out uh, my Ottawa Browns backers, and I just wanted a sincere appreciation to my dogs, the Dog Podcast, and thanks for spending time with me in the dog cave down in Ottawa. Cheers, guys. Woo, 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 woo. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com.